because it's a crazy job i like to do the crazy things that's why i choose the botany hello and welcome to best sips worldwide i'm your drinking companion susan schwartz an american travel writer living in london thanks to my mother's love of martinis the first words i spoke were shaken not stirred and i've been obsessed by the history of cocktails ever since Through the years, I've been lucky enough to sip some of the best made by the best. Hear that sound? It's time to cozy up to the bar and let me introduce you to the movers and shakers of the world's most famous watering holes. Happy New Year and welcome back to Best Sips Worldwide. Qatar may be a dry country, but that doesn't mean you can't get a great mojito. All five-star hotels serve alcohol. And Thor de Mendoza and Gary Jones, our guests today, have already made the very new Weston Doha's Hunter's Room and Grill into the happy hour seekers bar of the moment. Uh, I'm actually from India, southern part of India. Uh, previously I worked in Dubai. Uh, started my career in 2013 as a waiter. Later did the cross training uh, in bar after that i got a botany opportunity in abu dhabi later in uh, from abu dhabi i moved to doha this and is why, the first time uh, in doha and why were you drawn to bars or cocktails because it's a crazy job i like to do the crazy things that's why i chose the botany and so why did you think it was a crazy job too much fun in that that's why uh, did you like talking to the people who sat at the bar? Yeah, sure. Uh-huh. So I the do. social act aspect yeah. of it? Yeah, of uh-huh. course I do. Though. And the drink, the drink aspect as well? Yeah. Yes. Uh-huh. And how about you? Where did you well, How did you get into this? How did I get into this? Well, man, um, first of all, I'm from Spain. I'm from the south part of Spain. And well, I will start with hospitality. First uh, engage I got in hospitality was, was uh, 2007. I had the chance to start first job in kitchen. And that was my first contact in what is a restaurant thing. And well, I move on to some other uh, jobs. And then afterwards, I got the chance to study hospitality management. And Always in Spain? Going. It's in Spain, yes. Always in Spain, huh? And after, after that, well, I work in kitchen, I work in service. So I wanted to develop a little bit more. I want to do the next step. And I study hospitality management for three years, and I was doing different jobs as a traineeship and all that. And I skipped my studies in, in between, just to enlarge my picture of the operation and, and of course, of the whole hospitality worldwide. I had the chance to work in London, I had the chance to work in Spain, I work also in UAE, in Dubai and Abu Dhabi, and now I'm here in Qatar. And uh, well, I got the chance to open this restaurant, Hunter's Room and Grill. And so far, it's been a great opportunity and a great experience. Of course, growing something from the scratch is never easy. It's a big challenge. Um, so far, it's going well. The restaurant is performing good. How, and the so whole team. West, this West End is is a new hotel, right? It's an, relatively yes. new. When when you, maybe you tell me about the yeah. opening? The opening stage. Well, I had the chance. Well, in the whole hotel, I hadn't had the opportunity to be from the whole for the beginning. But in the restaurant, yes, we we start and we open the doors. Uh, what what date did you guys open as a hotel? As a hotel, on February. February, twenty seventh. February twenty eighth. And, and what, when did Hunters open? Hunters officially it was in the middle of uh, April. Oh, so it's yes. really really recent. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. and then we started with few, as we said, some mock-ups or some simulations first just to warm up before we open the doors. That we do with the whole staff of the hotel. They come, they have dinner, we do the service, and little by little, then we open. And it's been growing gradually, not that we open and then we got busy. We just open and then we had- Was it always going to be the steam, the steak? It was, I mean, the, the original, I mean, the, the theme of the restaurant, the, the core is uh, South African. This okay. uh, concept is a South African steakhouse. However, here in the West End, we tweak it a little, 
and uh, we are having a more contemporary steakhouse with a touch of the lunch bar. So we are mixing these two, two things together. So we have a cool environment with a great ambience with a live DJ and live saxophonist with a happy hour and then with a dinner at the same time. Is the cocktail menu representative of the South African steakhouse? Well, not mm. South African. The cocktail menu is based on grill. A grill house. Since we are a steakhouse and grill is our you know, the strong, strong point in the kitchen, we also bring that to the bar side and we are doing well, grill items. Grill we have a grill pineapple mojito. We have a grill. Oh, grill interesting. Gary yeah. will explain a little bit about that. Grill pineapple mojito and then grill plum and cucumber collins. Most of the cocktails are from the derived from the classic cocktails. So in that we especially we added some fruits in the grill fruits like strawberry, watermelons, pineapple, plum, cucumber. We added in the grill. So what? Give me a few examples of the cocktails that have the grilled fruits. So did you add them to like a mojito or a martini? Yeah, mo what, what? mojito, collins, Tom Collins we are using for the plum and cucumber. And for mojito we are using pineapple, grilled pineapple. For caipiosca we are using strawberry and watermelon caipiosca we are using. For whiskey we are using peach. That sounds so really So we have like five, yeah. five grilled cocktails. And then in the top of it we have aperitif cocktails. It's all based on the gin. So it's really good for the aperitif. Yeah, and so gin seems to be all over the yeah. world, <laughs> the spirit of the moment. I yeah, was it's a just in my last podcast was of um, Mr. Fogg's Tavern, which has over 300 gins oh. in London. Um, do you, are you trying to cultivate your gin library, should I Yeah, we have, we have, we have gin infusion here, like three kinds of uh, gin varieties we have, like Hendrix, Tanqueray, and Beef Eater. We have like, a, they can, guests can choose their own four, four ingredients, so we will mix it up in a like a huge glass. Like a gin and tonic, they can choose whatever they want, like pomegranate seeds, kiwi slices, strawberry slices, zest of lime, orange, grapefruit, and some tarragons. Whatever they want, they can choose, and then we can infuse the gin for them. I think that's really innovative. Basically, I haven't heard that anywhere. I mean, for example, we take Spain as an example. In Spain, it's a real trend to drink a gin and tonic. As the same as in London, I used to work in London as well. And gin is, a, I mean, you have a gin and tonic and I think it's 80% of the guests, they have a gin and tonic either, either, either before dinner or after. So many places have different kinds of gins. What we did is we took three of them that they are the, the strongest one in the, in the market, which is Hendrix, which is infused Hendrix, with... The, uh, Hendrix we infused with cucumber and rose. Yes, uh -huh. and then the Fitter 24, the Fitter 24. What we recommend normally is Tanqueray 10. Tanqueray 10 we have, and then the Fitter 24 as well. We have it. So the Fitter 24, Tanqueray 10, and Hendrix as our three jeans. Three and then you can choose any kind of ingredient. ingredients. And are you finding that your customers are coming back and trying different, yes, the different sure. ones? Yes, sure. Now that they've been here the first time, <laughs> yes. they say, wait, is that? Yeah, we have we bespoke, know. basically bespoke gin and tonic. Uh -huh. So they can choose whatever they would like, and then we'll make it for them. And we, of, of course, we, we do the decoration, the garnish, and all for them. Uh -huh. It's kind of, it's a good, I mean, it's a good relation, good experience. We create a bond with the guests, and when they come back, it's not something dull or something bored. That just they can change every time the ingredients, and we can create something. Or he, Gary, will create something for them, <laughs> which is kind of cool. What, do you find that the majority of your customers are locals or are staying at the hotel? We have, uh, well, of mix course. of customers. Yeah. Mix of customers. Some Europeans, some locals, mostly locals we are, like 70%. In Qatar, yes. In Qatar, yes. locals are big. Uh, we have a lot of locals in the hotel. Mm -hmm. Then our market, basically, European. We have a strong influence of German, English, of course. Do you find that the Qataris order a certain kind of cocktail as opposed to the Europeans who come or the rest of the world? I come? would say that they like, um, they go for the classics. They are not really, I would say, cocktail people. They are more of uh, some fermented drinks, you could say, like wine or wine beer. Or beers. Oh, okay. That. Oh, interesting. However, the expatriates or people that is coming here to work and they go for gin and tonics, cocktails, uh -huh. something more innovative. They adventure themselves more rather than uh, locals. And do I heard that you have happy hour and it seems to be a thing all over Doha to have happy hour. 
Um, it's, a, it's funny because I never really in London, you, you don't have it anymore. It's, I think of it as such an American thing, a happy hour. Um, do, do you think that people uh, take advantage of it here, happy hour? Happy hours, I mean, as per my experience in the Middle East, uh -huh. happy hour is something that is one of the basics of the restaurant operation everywhere. I mean, uh -huh. every restaurant has a happy hour and all of them they offer not the same, but everybody has a different signature thing, and that's what they what they go for. I mean, everybody has happy hour, and it's in the Middle East you need to have a happy hour uh -huh. since you need to attract the guests, you need to get the guests. So happy hour is one of the first points you need to think when you open the restaurant: how are you going to do happy hour, and what you want to offer to the guests. And how long happy hour, I guess, is? <laughs> well, it depends. It depends where you're located right. and uh, what is your market target, and then. With the help of marketing and the help of uh, upper management, then we decide where, what we're gonna do. Mm. We're gonna do happy hour at what time? Some hotels they do in the night, for example, from 11 to 1 o'clock in the night. Some places they do earlier. In our case, what we do is instead of happy hour, it's almost a happy day. <laughs> we start from 5 o'clock and then we continue that. Could be your that. Slogan. Yeah, we continue that till 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock. So we. It's an advantage for the ones that they are working in the office. They finish five o'clock, they change, they go to the place. At the end of the day, they just enjoy one hour or five hours. Here, they can come eight, nine o'clock, still they can enjoy a plenty of time. Now let's talk about mocktails. Um, do you find they're, they're just as popular here during, or do people really come here to, to drink alcohol, do you think? Mocktails. Yeah, mocktails. Mostly Qatari, Qatari people, they used to drink the mocktails, especially ladies. They like to drink mocktails like virgin mojitos, virgin pina colada, like that they used to drink often. Uh -huh. Because they won't consume alcohol, that's why. Right. And do you have as much fun creating the mocktails as you do the uh, grilled yeah. mocktails? Yeah, uh, for, for the mocktails we won't do the grilled fruits, but we use some uh, see exotic fruits for the mocktails. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what we do. And then some refreshing like uh, mint and basil, some thyme, some rosemary we use for the mocktail. And obviously you're a very new, a new, newish restaurant. Um, <laughs> how often do you think you'll change your cocktail menus? Cocktail menus, well, it all depends. It's more technical because we need to do a market segmentation and market study of uh, the things, uh, how much you sell, how much you want to have. If you want to tweak the things, as I said before, of course, in a whole menu, there is some things that they don't sell that much, and the other ones that they are the most popular. So basically, this is already been think about, thought about, sorry, and then the menu is what we have, and perhaps we will not change the whole thing, but we may we remove one thing and we put another, and we we try to innovate the menu. So far, it's just like that. I guess the country that doesn't have many seasons. Yeah. Um, you know, the, it's pretty much summer all the time. Um, will you change them? I'm, I'm using these with quotes, kind of seasonally, maybe for holidays and bring in. I don't, I don't know if you can like, do Christmas cocktail or we do, we do, you know, of course. summer cocktails too. We do. In, uh, we do in future. We plan for that for Thanksgiving. Also, we plan for different menus, and then for the Christmas, we plan for some new lace, wine new lace. We plan for. That. So slowly, slowly, we will implement the cocktail menu as yes. <laughs> Yeah, basically, as he said, we adapt to the trends. Uh, for example, there is Thanksgiving, Halloween, um, Christmas, New Year's Eve. Any, for example, also we take advantage of the national days, for example, Australia, South Africa, um, Spain. And, of course, we in, we put something on top of, the, of our actual menu. And we need to be... That's, the basic. We need to be very flexible on that, and we can take example as the, uh, for the Ramadan. During the Ramadan, there is no alcohol, mm -hmm. so in that time is when. Right, we're, even in hotels. Right? Yeah, yeah, every hotel, uh -huh. they are not allowed to serve alcohol. In this case, in Qatar. Right. So in that time is when you push the the mocktail, the mocktail, you know, right? the mocktail imagination or the mocktail. The mocktail. Well, I can't wait to try one of these mocktails. So why don't we go to the bar and let's make a drink? Yes, sure. let's go. Thanks so much to Thor and Gary for making me my first grilled pineapple mojito.
This upcoming year, we'll be covering new bars and old classics. Come back next week to find out who's serving what. Until next time, bottoms up. For more information and links to everything you've heard about, plus a bit more, please visit bestbitsworldwide.com. Thanks for listening to Best Sips Worldwide, a spin off of Best Bits Worldwide. Always remember the wise words of Oscar Wilde all things in moderation, including moderation, and never drink and drive. Okay, I said that last part. Theme music is by Stephen Shapiro and used with permission. You'll find me at the bar. <laughs>